Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. So today we're going to have a look at statistics, specifically related to unique item drops. Now, those of you that have viewed the channel a bit may have a sense that I've got a theory as to how unique drops work in Path of Exile, and I can confidently say now that it's wrong. But for those of you that weren't aware, uh, I used to believe that there were six tiers of uniques. Uh, the community generally calls them tiers 0 through 5, with the most common uniques being tier 5, so things like Worms Malt, Bated Breath, Parandus Blazon, the very rarest chase ones being uh, tier 0, that's Headhunter and Mage Blood. And then there, to give you a bit of an example of some items that are popular at other tiers, uh, tier 1 has Rizlatha's Coil, tier 2 has Chevron's Wrappings, tier 3 has Cold Iron Point, and tier 4 has Tabula Rasa. Uh, although there's a lot of uniques in each tier. Now, a few leagues back, the player Poor Fish Wife made a phenomenal resource where she analysed all of the inscribed ultimatums on the market and recognised that there were some patterns with them. From that, uh, I'll put a link to her work below, but uh, this she was able to come up with this phenomenal listing of the tiering of all of the unique items in the game as they existed in 3.14. Uh, obviously, being two leagues out of date now, it might be slightly wrong if GG have changed some things around, uh, but it mostly seems to still be accurate. Now, there's a lot of people who are always asking, what's the chance of getting XYZ outcome from an ancient orb? What's the chance of getting XYZ outcome from a wretched turn in? Or things like that. And ultimately, we don't know. We still don't know, but we have a fair bit of useful information that's come together. So I was talking on Discord with a player who had turned in almost 2,000 sets of the Divination card, The Wretched, this league. This player turned them all in at once and was able to provide me a full comprehensive list of everything that they'd got. Uh, so I'll put a link to this data on the online. The key information that we've got was the exact number of each belt that came out. And additionally, cross-referencing this with Poor Fishwife's work, we're able to work out the rarity tier of every unique as well. And by combining this information, we can get some sort of sense in the relative rarity of tier two to tier three, tier three versus tier four, tier four versus tier five uniques. So, uh, what information did we wind up with? From the 1,963 belts that were turned in, there was only one tier zero rarity unique, and that was Mage Blood. Uh, from tier one rarity, there were two of them, Rizlatha's Coils. For tier two rarity, which consists of Auxium, Biscos Leash, Pyroshock Clasp, a Feast Bind, and Famine Bind, uh, this player received a total of 29, so an average of 5.8 of each. For tier three, there are 10 unique belts, Malgara's Restraint, Soul Tether, Leash of Ablation, The Druggery, Soul Thirst, Diadian Dawn, Gluttony, Umbilicus Immortalis, Siege Breaker, and Perseverance. And they received 330 of those, so an average of 33 of each. And you can see how there's a quite sharp uh, geometric increase in the rarity, uh, in the number of each of them that you're getting per tier. Then for the tier 4 belts, there are six of them uh, Immortal Flesh, Megan Lord's Girdle, Prism Weave, The Magnate, Belt of the Deceiver, and Sunblast and a total of 128 of each, so 768 total. And then for the tier five rarities, uh, which there are only three, Parandus Blazon, Baited Bell, a Breath, and Worms Mold, uh, this player received 833 total between those three belts, about 277 of each. Now, firstly, I think it's important to point out that Malagara's Restraint is an extreme outlier here. And this initially got me questioning uh, is it possible that the tiering system is wrong and Melagara's Restraint is in its own tier somewhere between tier 2 and tier 3? So I did an analysis and I assumed that you got 330 belts and they were going to be distributed evenly among all of the tier 3 rarity uniques. So Restraint, Tether, Ablation, Druggery, Soul Thirst, Diadian, Gluttony, Umbilicus, Siegebreaker and Perseverance. And I asked this myself, what's the probability of getting only 18 specifically of Malagara's Restraint, or 18 or fewer. And it turned out that the probability was about 1 in 500. So that seemed like it's a reasonably compelling evidence that the tiering uh, theme is wrong. However, I then thought about it a bit more and realised that there's nothing special about Malagara's Restraint. It could have been any of them. And so that means that it's actually only about 1 in 50 that random chance would, uh, would cause you to get a result as extreme as only getting 18 out of 330. And on that basis, I think it is actually pretty reasonable. You're going to get some outlier result, and why would it not be Malagara's Restraint? On that basis, I don't think that that is compelling enough evidence to say that the tiering system is wrong and that Malagara's Restraint is rarer than a tier 3. 
I think it is the same rarity as tier 3s, uh, just that this player got lucky or unlucky, depending upon whether you consider getting fewer Malgara's restraints to be a positive result or a negative one. So the next thing that we can do is we can have a look at how frequently you get each particular, uh, you get a belt of each particular tier and average it out across the tier. So we have that they got on average 0.5 of each tier zero belt, two of each tier one, 5.8 of each tier two, 33 of each tier three, 128 of each tier four, and 277 of each tier five. Now this is where we start getting into speculation. I believe we may have a weighting system that is something like the numbers that you see here. So each tier zero belt weighted at one, each tier four weighted at four, uh, sorry, each tier one weighted at four, each tier two weighted at 10, each tier three weighted at 60, which means that you get six, uh, six of a specific tier three belt for each one specific tier two belt that you get. So if you had a massive sample size, you would expect to see six soul tethers drop for every one auxium. Uh, then 250 for tier four and 550 for tier five. But this is somewhat speculative. Uh, I can't guarantee that these are right or anything like it. Uh, this is just a set of smooth numbers that fit the data. What's essentially, what's most important though, is to say that we do not have enough information to pin down tier zero or tier one rarities. And those are probably the ones people care the most about. Because if you are turning in sets of the wretched, uh, a huge percentage of your expected value comes from the roughly one in a few from the one in a few thousand outcomes that's going to give you a headhunter or a mage blood. In fact, that is the only reason people turn in this divination card is they see it as being you know one piece of one of these uber belts that everyone wants, and everything else is essentially just a waste product uh, that you produce while you're chasing headhunters and mage bloods. So these numbers could be higher or lower than one in four, uh, and unfortunately, we don't have enough data to tell. What sort of data would we need in order to be able to more accurately determine the relative rarity of, say, tier zero versus tier three? Uh, what we would need is turn-ins of the wretched or ancient orbs or other similar systems like beasts that create a, a random unique belt uh, with a total weight. Oh, sorry, with a total number of headhunters and mage bloods that starts to get in the 50 range. What's more is we would need to get this from uh, this data from people who have committed to reporting it before they actually seek it out. And that's really important because otherwise you will get a massive degree of publication bias where people and reporting bias where people will only report the results that they personally feel are remarkable. So with all of that in mind, um, I am starting to speculate that Mageblood and Headhunter are rarer than I had previously believed them to be, uh, but I'm not exactly certain exa by how much. If these figures are correct, and there is absolutely no reason to believe that they're exactly right, but I think that they could be re realistically close to correct, I uh, would expect that for each Headhunter and Mageblood that you got, it would take you 1,650 tier five belts, uh, 250 tier four belts. So now we're up to 3,150. Uh, another 600 of these. So that'd be 3,750, uh, 3,800. You'd be looking at getting one mage blood per 3,806 sets of the wretched. And also you would get one headhunter in that period, but we don't know. And ultimately we're not going to find out unless someone does a million divination card turn in. That's all I got on this. Uh, may your Val Orbs have interesting results and may you have fun turning in copies of The Wretched. And if you are interested in turning in a large number of copies of The Wretched, I'd really appreciate it if you reach out to me and say in advance, before you actually turn them in, uh, give me a sense of how many you're gonna turn in. And then afterwards, uh, just put together a spreadsheet like this and flick it through to me because that will provide much more information than I was able to get from the data that was sent to me on Discord. May Valorbs have interesting results and don't use one on a mage blood unless it's got four flasks on it.